Hi y'all. I know, I've been MIA. There's been a lot going on. But look, it's Roxy. Hello. <laughs> and a kid, Lila. And a kid, Lila. I thought that I would make a vlog for you guys. Um, I'll go in the shop and I'll show you what kind of progress is happening in there because there actually is some. The other thing that I'm going to include, Lila, I'm going to the shop, okay? The other thing I'm going to include is a video file that Here, Emily. we were asked to Give me that. thank and you this. thank oh. you Give that we were asked to make from a production company. Guys, if you have a YouTube show, you'll feel me. Production companies find people on YouTube, so it's it's pretty crazy. Like I get probably four emails a week from production companies wanting me to. Mm -hmm. Have a Skype interview, talk about being the next hit show. Um, anyway, it gets a little bit tiring. It's kind of weird. It sounds kind of prima donna to say maybe, but I don't know. Hardly any of the projections and um, meetings that happen with the production companies ever go anywhere. Also, could be because I resist TV. Anyway. Um, this one production company, um, the idea of the show was pretty cool. So I think I'm just going to include our video that Aaron and I made to send them. Yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff going on all the time. Anyway, um, I'm going to include that because you might find it amusing. There's Zen. And look, there's an engine in the Nova. Yes, progress. She's got my roadkill hat on. I do. <laughs> So, um, with the Nova, everyone is always wanting to know updates on this car. Um, roadkill. We have not cut and buffed this car yet, so the paint is still just as we sprayed it. Um, but it's going to be good. We wanted to get the engine in and kind of get some mechanical progress on it, and then we're going to cut and buff. Uh, transmission's bolted up, bell housing's bolted up, and we're just kind of clinking away at it. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm filming for the next In the Shop with Emily episode. My arm's getting tired. I'm filming for the next In the Shop with Emily episode. So that's why you're not seeing any of that footage is because I'm shooting it with the real camera and I'm editing a full episode because it's been a month and a half since my last full episode. It's just been a lot of craziness. Anyway. Um, I'll roll the, uh, little interview thing that Aaron and I did, not interview, it's like question answer sort of deal, um, right now. I'm Aaron. And I'm Emily, and we're here to answer a few questions for you guys so that you can kind of get to know us a little bit. So fire up those questions, babe. All right. First one, where did your interest in mechanics slash flying come from? First. You want me to answer first? Yeah. Well, I think mechanics was a very natural thing. I grew up in a diesel repair shop, and I got a go-kart when I was probably six years old. Had a little lawnmower engine on it, and that was a freaking blast. Um, but my dad was always in the shop working, and so I had to figure out how to fix that so I'd go ride. And so I don't know if it was a passion early on. It was more of a necessity. And it just caught me. I, I just be began to realize, start that over. Are we going to edit this some? Probably not. <laughs> We're not going to edit this, so I'm not going to start that over. <laughs> I don't want to edit it. <laughs> it is what it is, guys. Yeah. So anyways, I just kind of developed over time. You know, being around the shop, having the tools, having the things to actually go out and work on stuff. I don't know. It, it just kind of developed. It's, it's always what I've done. What about you on that? Um, okay, so the mechanics. I began to love cars and working on cars when I met Aaron. So I was 14 and he was 17 when he asked me to be his girlfriend and I just always wanted to be around him. So I was always in the shop because he was either working on, you know, trucks. He does heavy mm -hmm. diesel repairs, so he works on those million mile engines in 18 wheelers. So he was either working on that or he was working on projects of his own and I was always just in the shop and he encouraged me to get my hands dirty and try and learn and I did and I loved it. I just had this great sense of accomplishment and I became a little bit obsessed with it. So um, that's where my love for mechanics came from, this guy. <laughs> and then flying was a whole different thing. 
Yeah, flying was totally different. I, I never really thought I had a passion for flying. And Emily started traveling a lot in her career and I really wanted to go with her, but I was scared to fly. And so as the mechanical person I am, I reasoned if I could understand it, then maybe somehow I could get comfortable with it. And man, I got into the books and started studying and I went up in a small airplane. And although I was still scared, it excited me. There was something about it that just grabbed me. And so I continued on with my training, ended up becoming a pilot and buying an airplane and buying a hangar and all these crazy things that we're doing now. But that's it. I, I did fly as a little kid with an uncle of mine, uh, but I it, that never translated into my life. It was, It wasn't know, a goal until about thir- five years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was probably 30 years old before I actually actively started training. So that's interesting how you can be exposed to stuff and not even know it's your passion until you get a little more involved in it. What about you and flying? Mm, well, I grew up flying with a family friend of ours, and the story is actually very cool. I'll try to make it brief. Um, I grew up flying with this guy, this older man. He was like a grandfather. Not this guy. And, um, and his wife, Ellie, she was an awesome woman, and they were like second grandparents to me. And he would fly my sister and I around in his small plane, and I had so many fond memories of that. So when Aaron started training to get his pilot's license, I was like, go for it. I love flying. Like, I'm totally about this. And it turned out that we ended up buying the exact plane that I grew up flying in. So it was really kind of an amazing full circle thing because I loved that little plane. And when Aaron and I started looking at buying one of our own, we found pictures of the plane and I was like, this little plane would be so cool to have. And we ended up buying that exact plane. So it's really cool. There's been a lot of things in our life that have come together like that, that we're super grateful for and you know we've worked for dreams to come true and then they come true even bigger and better than we could have imagined so usually faster than we're prepared to <laughs> financially pay for them yeah that too <laughs> but we do it anyways we Make figure it, it out okay, okay next question next question <clears throat> what could you bring into the program in terms of credentials and skill set credentials i'm out i have Don't no have credentials any. either i quit school in third grade my parents yeah. were hippies and decided that they wanted to homeschool my sister and I. So I, the only conventional education that I personally have had is to the third grade level. The rest has been me, um, my parents encouraging me, but they really put my sister and I's education in our own hands. So we were like given the freedom to explore what we were interested in and avidly learn what made us tick. So it was really cool because I had never studied the sciences until I got got with Aaron and started building engines. So I never learned the sciences, never went to science class and passed any tests as far as sciences go, but I can build an engine. So it's an interesting deal because my education has been totally unorthodox, to say the least. So um, credentials, I have none. I don't have a high school diploma. I don't have any degrees of any sort. All I have is ambition and the ability to learn stuff on the fly and not ashamed to ask questions and I'm generally generally a very passionate and excited person so that, yeah we, we that doesn't really consider myself uh, having credentials but no we pretty well just learned how to do stuff we, we learn how to learn um, as far as credentials I was joking but but aside from passing like a pilot certificate a driver's license a motorcycle license <laughs> I just haven't found a need to do anything else. But I've been in the shop for 15, 20 years actively, building diesel engines, running a crew there. Uh, a few years back, I started putting diesel engines in Jeeps, so I ran that company for a while. And then we've done a lot of diesel, no, excuse me, we've done a lot of like modern engine swaps and older cars and things like that. And that's really the bulk of our YouTube show that we do, is basically taking old stuff, that is otherwise unusable and making it modern, cool, and functional. And so that's, as far as skill sets, that's probably where we are, yeah. is being able to make something out of junk and make it cool. I guess one thing I could quickly touch on is my profession. I started modeling and acting when I was 14, and it was very much a passion of mine, surprisingly, kind of like aviation was for Aaron. 
I was always a tomboy. I never thought that I would be into girly stuff like getting my hair and makeup done and being in photo shoots and traveling the world and being in magazines like that. Um, but it became something that I really found a passion in and I loved the kind of playing a role as far as who am I selling to, the marketing aspects, um, watching the production of all of the commercials and photo shoots and things like that. So um, my history, past 15 years um, in the industry, I've modeled and acted and done all kinds of cool stuff like music videos and commercials and stuff all over the world. So that's been really cool um, and an also a really cool balance to I started modeling and acting the same year I started building engines with this guy, so it was like the contrast was really cool. So that's why I, th these days with my brand as far as the car girl, I use the hashtag model mechanic because I still model and act um, and love wrenching on stuff. So it's kind of a fun contrast and I like it. Sure, and those skills have obviously helped us being able to film stuff and being, all that good junk. Being good looking. <laughs> no. That's not really a skill, is it? No. <clears throat> this one? Uh, what would be your go-to method for bringing down a drone? I saw this awesome YouTube video, and they had trained hawks to attack drones. Now, I don't think we're going to have that option, <laughs> but that was pretty freaking cool. That was amazing. Awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. Predator bird taking down technology. Yeah. I, I don't know that I have any certain um, strategy for taking a drone down. I, I think that I would probably like look to Aaron because he's always the one that I go to for solution oriented things like that. Um, yeah. But together, I think that we could come up with something cool and unique. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't give this any forethought, so I don't know. We just have to see. Well, we, we don't know what kind of tools we have. Right. What resources. But, like a net and some way to shoot it would be cool. Uh huh. We used to make potato guns. Yeah. We'd like to launch something out of that. A potato gun would be fun like, with a net in it. Like a grocery and sack wadded up. We'd do something. Yeah. Take that freaking drone down. Yeah. Take it down, babe. Oops, that's not gonna work. How do you work under pressure? <laughs> I don't know how to work without pressure. <laughs> That's all I've ever done. Somehow we always get ourselves in these crazy deals where we're building a car last minute and the test drive is literally the drive out to a 4,000 mile road trip. Like, mm -hmm. it's crazy. The, 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 I was going to say the shit we get ourselves into. Yeah. Can I edit that? We, piece? no, not. We get into some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, my sunny disposition carries through. I'm like happy and positive. I'm like, we got this, babe. And Aaron's like, Aaron is an animal. He like gets into this mode of like, he will find the problem. He will find the solution. He will make it happen. And we will mm -hmm. do what we need to do to achieve our goal. It's really badass. Yeah, I've been in the shop since I was a kid. And early on, my dad owned the company. And so early on, I became the boss. And so I... I was the go-to person like I had to figure it out you know it, it's nice when you take your car somewhere and you drop it off and someone else can deal with the problems eventually I realized I was that person and so yeah under pressure we're good <laughs> so yeah there you go this uh, video's been long enough I'm gonna cut it right here nice to meet y'all later bye bye hello so I hope you liked that um found it amusing, insightful, anything like that. That's going to be it for this episode. Yep. I just kind of wanted to put something out there, say yep. sorry that I don't have a full episode out. It's all Elias' fault. That's actually your fault. <laughs> okay, you're right. Also, one other way to keep tabs on me is following me on social media. So Facebook and Instagram. I post a ton of Instagram stories. Um, so that's another way to keep content alive. Yep. Um, so on Instagram, it's I'm Emily Williams. And Facebook is Emily Williams Reeves. See you guys there. Have an awesome day. Go buy some gear for uh, Christmas. Later.